Two, literally so many developers nowadays are wasting their time doing tutorials and courses and paying for all these things online when there is a much better way to be learning how to code. So I just started developing this app that I wanted to make and I'm using a language that I haven't really ever used before on an app. And instead of wasting my time doing tutorials, courses, and spending like 20 hours doing that, I decided to be much faster to learn it by actually building something. And a lot of people are missing that. A lot of people go and they think they have to watch all these tutorials. That's not the case and it's actually not how you should be doing it at all. People are only telling you to do this stuff, obviously, so they can make money off of you. <laughs> Who doesn't want to make money but i just wanted to show you guys my workflow on how i'm actually doing this so i can show you how you can be learning on the fly and learning languages a lot faster than you currently are with tutorials courses youtube whatever i think people's problem is they look at code and programming languages much too in depth people get way too specific and they think programming languages only do one thing per certain programming language and that's really not the case the programming language needs to be used as a tool to solve problems and the problem being the app or whatever you want to make it can be solved with a programming language and you're thinking that there's a certain programming language for the job and yes in some cases some programming languages would be better than the others but let's just get into my workflow and I can show you how you can basically use any programming language to do what you want all right enough talking let's do it here is the app I'm working on it is in Swift and I haven't really built a project in Xcode before I've done like things here and there but I decided I want to make an app and put it on the app store and that was one of my 2019 goals so I'm a big beer guy and I really want this app where I can find new beers in my location and there's not really much like that online so I'm gonna make it I need to make this view controller be basically a beer info tab when I click into one of the beer I want to have all the info about that beer obviously so that's the plan oh my gosh <laughs> I'm sending a request to get info for a specific beer with a beer ID and I'm getting back all this JSON and I need to way to parse this JSON and I'm not really sure how to do it in Swift so instead what I would do, I do know there's a thing called Codable and I've heard about that with JSON parsing, I don't really know much about it so I'm just gonna go and look it up. What I'm seeing is that this Codable, if I have JSON that looks like this, I can just do this and get back as a struct the name and the age and I can just type user.name, user.age and that's what it'll print out with the data if you decode it with the struct. So that's what we're gonna try to do. And this is of type Codable. I have no idea what I'm doing. When you are programming with a new language, just keep in mind that if you don't know this new language and you get confused on what you're trying to do, think of how you do it in the language that you do know and then kind of reverse engineer the steps from there. So say I need to make an HTTPS request. Somehow I have to get data, right? Well, I'm kind of confused on how I would get data with a new language, but then I remember, okay, so if I was using JavaScript, I would make an HTTPS request to get that data. Then all you would have to really do is Google search how to make an HTTPS call with Swift. Just remember that the things you do can always be done with another programming language and just kind of retrace your steps. Just think, how would I do this with a language that I already know how to use? I'm gonna need to clean these names up. This is getting confusing. Single beer, beers, single beer info, beer, hits, beer info. Yeah. I need to take create a JSON decoder. And then what I would do is I actually try to decode it down into one of the structs that I've made for the data that comes back from the JSON. Honestly, one thing that you should not follow me on is you should really learn the best practices with the language you're learning while you go, or else you're gonna have to go back and fix your entire project, and that's basically what I'm gonna have to do. But right now, I just wanna get things working, and that's kinda how I do it on the fly. I'd rather spend my time just getting things to work than knowing how to do it the best way, because that wastes time. We're gonna test out, see if I actually did this JSON right or not. Oh, Swift decoding error. Expected to decode array, but found a dictionary instead. 
when you're doing something like learning a new language, what's gonna make you a great developer is not being afraid to actually run into a problem and dive into docs and articles to solve that problem. A lot of people are afraid to even do that and that's why they watch all these tutorials and they wait until they feel ready, but you're never actually gonna feel that ready. That's kind of the shitty part about coding, but that's also the best part. You're always able to just run because there's so much information online and all these people that somehow are 10 million times smarter than I am, but we're gonna learn from them. Thanks for the free information, guys. There's literally so much JSON. Oh my gosh. Parsed JSON number does not fit in int. 90% of my time is spent literally Google searching when I try to learn a new language. JavaScript doesn't really have that many data types, so I kind of have to look this up. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I wish I would have seen a video like this actually when I was learning to code. I wasted so much time doing tutorials and courses. Just so you guys know, if you haven't had any experience in the industry, you will literally have companies that make their own languages and all this, and you do have to learn on the fly. You don't get to take all these courses and tutorials to learn this language. They expect you to be able to pick up these languages and just go. Wow, I actually did that right on the first try. So Swift uses something actually called UIKit, which is how they do all their front end stuff and that's a framework provided by Apple. Apple actually is awesome because the Swift language and basically everything you need is provided by Apple. And it's not anything like JavaScript in the terms that it's messy and everyone else has to do something. But this type of design is new to me, so I have to actually go do a bunch of research and read into Apple's docs on how to use their kits, all of their frameworks, because I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm making a UI. <laughs> Ah, that's what I want right there. I wanted this back button. Let's see what I got now. Nice. One thing I really try to do when I'm writing with new code is try to leave comments everywhere because I know if I come back in a month this code, I'm not gonna know what the fuck is going on because I have so much shitty code written because I'm new. Try to leave, if you're just starting out with a language, don't make the mistake I had before and actually try to leave comments or else you'll have no idea what's going on when you come back. Especially if you actually haven't coded with that language since you did this last, you'll come back and you literally won't know anything. So basically all I'm doing is searching for a beer, going into that beer, and none of it is updated. That's great. And I crashed. The UI label text must be used from main thread only. I don't really have to change threadings because JavaScript's single threaded. So before doing this, I really didn't even know really what this is. So that's another reason why you should jump around coding languages and just try to use new ones because one, it challenges you to use your brain and actually jump through docs and not be scared. And two, you learn things that maybe one language wouldn't do like threading. So basically I have to go back on the main thread and then update the UI because all of the UI is on the main thread. And when I'm in a closure like this in Swift, I guess you are not operating on a main thread, you're operating on a different thread, so. Sometimes you find that uh, the answer you're looking for is in one of these questions that is a response to the answer. Oh, my UI is so bad right now, I really don't even care. Now that I have this find this brew, I need to pull the user's location and I know Apple's really crazy about that. So something I need to do is look it up. I really don't even know. I have no idea what I'm doing. So, and I need the user's location because what I want to do is actually pull data from where the beer is located and how close it is to the user. And I want to maybe pull that up on Google maps or something. I don't know. Again, no idea what I'm doing. Core Location is one of those frameworks that Swift actually provides for you. Super nice. You don't really need a lot of third-party stuff in Swift or iOS programming, which is awesome, and it makes it really easy. I'm really starting to like this. I'm already learning. Oh my gosh, look at that. 
so it's actually very tempting to just copy and paste and try to get this code to work but if you actually do want to learn what you're doing when you're programming you can't just go and copy and paste all the code you see when you're using a new language because you're not actually going to learn anything you want to read what that code does and actually understand it make sure you can replicate that i mean you don't have to memorize it but make sure you at least know what's going on so you could comment it like and so if you came back you knew what was going on and not just because you copy and paste it and hope it works you'll never become a better programmer that way so this is when a user updates locations did fail okay so if they said no or they haven't determined yet then I want to request it okay Oh, oh, these are the lat and longitude numbers. I already had them, okay. All right, so I do get back my location. I don't think these coordinates are actually correct. That doesn't look correct at all, but who am I? I'm not Christopher Columbus, so. So I'm guessing if I press find this brew, I probably wanna go to like a map view. That seems like a lot of work and I really don't know how to do that. So I think I'm done coding for today, but I really just wanted to walk you guys through how I went and actually go and learn a new language because it's really important that you have this skill as a developer. I'm working on my skills still. I'm not great at it, but I'm definitely getting better. And it's actually a lot of fun. It's a lot more fun than watching tutorials for hours and then finally getting to learn on your own and do your own stuff instead of following some person around coding what they're coding. Instead, just diving into the docs and reading what other people have to say. Most of the time when you're starting out, every question you have has already been answered answered 10,000 times online. So it's super easy to find that too. And if not, there's so many places you can post stuff. It just makes developing a lot more fun when you're not watching tutorials. And I just want you guys to know how important the skill is to have of being able to pick up a new language on the fly and just get working with it because most of the jobs in the industry are gonna do that. Having the skill is invaluable. Again, broken record, but I just want you guys to know. All right, that's about it. Till next time.